Good morning, sir. Good morning. Welcome everybody to this session. Please type in the chat which city are you joining in from? Are lovely. I am also based in Pune, Dr. Prachwalani. Hyderabad, Manohar, very well. New Delhi, but must be really cold. <coughs> Okay. Haryana. Pile where in Haryana we used to live in Gurgaon. Good. So friends, welcome to the session uh, today. This is a very, very uh, powerful concept and uh, also something that is very misunderstood. So while I have put together this presentation, uh, the idea is just to discuss more so that we can get the maximum out of the session today. The session, we will have a discussion on what resistance is, what acceptance is, and what are the, some of the misconceptions around this topic. And I would urge you to keep your cameras on. So this is a small group, so we can have a good interaction. And we will also be doing a mindfulness uh, exercise around acceptance, which will be 20 to 30 minutes uh, long, and uh, which you could do sitting or lying down. So in case you want to grab your yoga mats or something, please uh, do that now. And then we will get started uh, with the session. So friends, acceptance, uh, my journey of acceptance uh, started about 10, 15 years ago. You know, in 2009, we had a visitor uh, coming to us and he was talking to me about um, going with the flow. And that time I used to work in the corporate sector and I thought to myself, what is this? What is he talking about? You know, I... I that time I used to be a driver, like, like to take control of everything, like to take charge of everything in my life, deliver results and so on and so forth. And I just, uh, I heard him uh, because he was uh, my well-wisher and he was uh, quite a senior person. <clears throat> and uh, But I dismissed that thought. I didn't do much about it. Uh, and then in 2020, a friend of mine uh, started talking to me about surrender. Uh, this was around July uh, 2020. And I said, surrender? Uh, what does that mean? You know, how can I surrender? You know, how can we surrender? We need to deliver things. You know, we need to make things happen. How can I surrender? But then I gradually, there was something in me which was ringing true with what she was saying. And I tried surrendering to things, going with the flow, little by little, you know. Uh, maybe on Sundays, I'll not try and so much be a driver, but accept things as they are. And uh, the turning point uh, came for me when uh, in December 2020, I read this phenomenal book called The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. And uh, in case uh, you haven't read this book, I would urge you to pick it up and read it. Uh, that's an amazing, amazing book. It's about Michael Singer, who was a PhD student in America. And uh, this book starts somewhere in 70s when he was going through his uh, PhD. He was doing his PhD. And, uh, you know, from the stipend that he used to get, he uh, bought a couple of acres, five, 10 acres land, and he built a log hut, and he started meditating there. And uh, I'm not going to share the entire story with you, but one thing led to the other. And, uh, you know, he started a company that had $300 million revenue and $1 billion valuation. And not $1 billion today, this was $1 billion about 20 years back, sometime in 2000, early 2000. So, you know, how by just saying yes to what was coming his way, you know, by surrendering, by accepting whatever he was doing, uh, so he went on to from being a monk in a forest, uh, living a monk-like life in a forest, to becoming the CEO of a billion-dollar valued company. So that was a turning point in my life. And then I started saying yes uh, to whatever came my way. And uh, it's been quite a magical journey uh, for me uh, since then. And I've been truly fascinated. I realized the power of what acceptance is, what saying yes uh, to what comes our way, the importance of that is. Uh, 
So I have put this small presentation to just to facilitate our discussion, but I would urge you to uh, unmute and speak every any time you have a question or clarification or comment to make. That's how we will uh, do get the best value out of the session today. So acceptance is uh, the opposite of avoidance to understand it very, very simply. Uh, most of the times, uh, you know, we are uh, either running towards what we want or trying to avoid what we don't, don't want. But what truly it means is a willingness to experience what is happening to us at this moment. And, you know, somebody asked uh, Michael Singer, what is one of the simplest ways to practice acceptance? And he suggested accepting the weather as it is, is one great way to start practicing, practicing acceptance. So if it's like in Delhi or North, there is bitter cold, you know, you start by accepting it, you know, the, rather than trying to, uh, uh, trying to change it or fret about it or complain about it, there is not much that we can do about the weather, you know. Uh, it's winter today and then a couple of months down the line, it's going to get very hot. So, you know, if we go through our life just by complaining what is rather than experiencing what uh, is uh, here for us, you know, we lose so much of energy. And that has been one of my uh, realizations that uh, there is so much energy that we lose in trying to resist, uh, you know, what is there in the present moment for us. So accepting wholeheartedly. Uh, it means what acceptance means is that we accept our feelings uh, it may not necessarily mean that we agree with what is. So it is cold. We understand it is cold. Uh, so we and we are feeling uncomfortable. So we accept that feeling of uh, discomfort or you know the challenge that comes with it, uh, rather than resist it. So when we start accepting things, uh, you know we open up uh, to the experience rather than resisting the experience. We open up to the experience and we tune in. Uh, to our personal feelings. Uh, we th This is our third session today uh, in the series of mindfulness uh, sessions that we have started on Sundays. Uh, so in case you want to uh, check out how to tune into your personal feelings, uh, check out the session we did about two weeks back on body intelligence and awareness and tuning in. All these sessions are in our uh, YouTube uh, channel. Uh, I'll, during the session today, share the link to our YouTube channel so that you can go and look up the uh, videos of the previous sessions there. Acceptance uh, uh, is not indifference. Uh, you know, this is where uh, a lot of uh, challenges come. People think, you know, by accepting, I become quiet or I become passive or I just need to uh, like everything what everybody is saying, uh, you know, or uh, agree with what everybody is saying. You know, acceptance is not any of these. And I'd like to pause here to see uh, if you have any questions or comments about what we have discussed about acceptance so far, and then we will move on uh, with further discussion. So I have just one question on the previous slide where you talked about uh, taking responsibility. Yeah. W what exactly do you mean, like taking responsibility for what? The feelings taking that you're responsibility having? for, you know, once we open up to our experience, you know, what is it? So uh, just continuing on the example of uh, the winter situation that's there in the north, we first accept that it is, and then we uh, accept that I'm feeling uncomfortable about it. And then I take responsibility. What is it that I can do? Can I put two layers? Can I put three layers? Can I put a heater? What is it I can do? And you can apply this to any situation in your life. First, open up and accept. And once we start accepting it, then our mind kind of uh, opens up to doing, you know, what is it I can do in this? You know, as long as we are resisting, we are just blaming somebody outside us, you know, and we are pushing things away. But when we accept, we open up to acceptance and we become mindful of the what is happening. Then we start the thought that starts coming to us. The thought of blame starts getting replaced with the thought of what is it I can do in this situation. And that, that that's the empowering part of uh, acceptance. Uh, does that uh, help? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, Ashish sir, good morning. Good morning. Rao, Rao here. I yeah. think uh, it's see this acceptability, acceptance. 
responsibility the, uh, the, let me put the responsibility responsibility means we think it's some duty some commitment and all that it is not responsibility means ability to respond see the moment we take the responsibility then suppose something is happening in afghanistan and i am not responsible for that but look by just taking that your ability to respond you may not be doing directly anything but yes you have a feeling that something yes. is going wrong there what best can be done done suppose we don't take responsibility there is no action absolutely very well said very well brought out rao sir it is our ability to respond you know uh, there is war going on in afghanistan ukraine there is nothing we may maybe we can do directly True. but we can at least meditate for the well being we can meditate for the uh, you know peace in the world and these things have been proven Uh, to have benefit so there is there are research that is available when there is a group of monks who meditated the crime rates went down uh, you know so that is a very well established fact so thank you for bringing that out rao sir uh moving on so this is just an example of you know if somebody accuses us then you know we may feel uh, angry or frustrated uh, so except uh not that we were wrongfully accused but accept the feeling of anger and frustration that it is bringing about and then you know do what we can do to change the situation and this is one of the most beautiful and amazing insights that i have got on acceptance which is a serenity prayer from the alcoholics anonymous uh, alcoholics anonymous and uh, they say that god grant me the serenity to accept the things that i cannot change courage to change the things that i can and the wisdom to know the difference alcoholics anonymous has been doing phenomenal work uh, in this area of de addiction and the progress for the alcoholics start when they first accept that there is a challenge as long as we live in denial of the problem uh, there is little that we can do so first uh, this is the first step accepting uh, things that i cannot change and that gives us the power uh, and the courage to change the things that i can and the wisdom also comes um, so i'll pause here to see if anybody has got any comment no no sir this is an amazing uh, amazing thing once we understand this this can transform lives of the people now the okay. question there is a thin line actually what can be changed what cannot be changed it's a very thin line yeah. see many if once we understand that of course that's where we are begging the god the wisdom amazing yeah. i loved this one i see 20 years ago yeah. it's always i quote it in my talks excellent thank you, thank amazing. you sir awesome. yeah this is very powerful uh moving on uh, then you know we talked a little bit about uh, resistance uh, to understand there are always things which are going on in our life which we like which are pleasant to us uh, and <laughs> things which we don't like which are unpleasant and we embrace uh, what we like and we resist what we don't like and in that uh, there is uh, little that we can do about what we don't like but we lose our energy uh in you know trying to create that resistance trying to hold on uh, to what we like and the uh, the acceptance is not an issue when it comes to pleasant things you know the acceptance the uh, is only it applies when we talking about unpleasant things you know which we find difficult to accept and uh, we uh, the realization that uh, the unpleasant things are inevitable and they are impermanent that that is where the things start changing for us and we will see more of it as we uh, uh, do the meditation today uh, so the, the conflict arises you know there is pain and we want no pain uh, one of my uh, fellow teacher says the pain is inevitable but the suffering is a choice so you know we need to start accepting the pain welcome the pain Uh, and by welcoming we don't invite it. it it's just that we recognize that there is a message that the pain is trying to give us the you know there is something a, a lot of people think fear is a negative emotion but imagine if there was no fear uh, would we have survived as a race uh, so fear plays a very important role in our survival so welcome fear uh, over uh, you know overthinking about fear imagining the worst uh, doing it too much can be bad but just the fear plays a very important role 
And uh, the way we deal with unpleasant emotions is mostly by suppressing it, uh, you know, not paying attention to it or by distracting ourselves, uh, you know, people drink themselves silly or uh, take drugs or whatever else, uh, you know, but uh, the challenge is whether you suppress it, it doesn't go away and maybe it comes back with double the, uh, uh, you know, impact, double the energy and distracting is also not a very effective strategy. What is more effective is reframing and we uh, heard a beautiful story on reframing yesterday by Nitya Shanti. We'll be putting up that recording on uh, our YouTube channel shortly. Uh, so those of you who missed the session, attending the session live yesterday, listen to the story of that mother and the child who killed her son uh, about reframing and positive thinking. So this is how we can, uh, it can help us deal with some of the conflict that is there. Weber, I'll come to you. Uh, give me a minute. So now I'll pause here and we will shortly go into the mindfulness practice on acceptance. Uh, Baba, do you have a question? Yeah, so very good morning. So I uh, you know, just now heard about acceptance yeah. and we practice. So this question is more related to integration of many knowledges available. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the knowledge, uh, even in your platforms we get is that, you know, this visualization and uh, already you know visualizing that you have it it's, suppose you lack something so we should not uh, uh, think that we lack it we already have it this is the kind of knowledge is also there in the uh, various platforms that uh, we should never feel uh, a feeling of lack yeah, yeah. now uh, in this process uh, what i understand is that first we need to accept that there is a lack so how do we process it like uh, these two or how can we integrate these two things? Yeah, so once we acknowledge that there is a lack, then what comes to you next, Weber? Uh, lack comes, uh, no, uh, as such, if you ask me with the moment, I any any situation I accept, peace comes. Peace, okay. yeah, you feel yeah. peaceful, right? You feel and peaceful. Okay. And uh, when you feel lack, is that a high energy situation? Or when you feel peaceful, that's a high energy situation to be in? No, no. Definitely peaceful is a uh, better energy. situation. Yeah. Right. So that, that's the difference, Weber. When we make peace with what is, what is uh, rather than what should be, you know, then we move to a high energy level. And when we are vibrating at high energy, then serendipity, synchronicity, and so many other things happen. Uh, it connects us with the higher energy forces around us and the solutions start emerging for us. Okay, but I, I was uh, like uh, trying to understand this. Can we have a process of like, I, I, are they in conflict or uh, can we integrate? Uh, integrate what? Like uh, these two processes, like one is the acceptance process, which is simple, you know, accept it and then work for it. So it is not visualizing that I already have it and such things. You know, it's a very simple process. Just accept it and you get into a state of peace and then you work towards it and you know the reality. You are facing the reality. So there is no visualization. There is no expectation. So this path is different. Okay. And when we go to that path of say, I don't feel a feel of lack, just imagine it is already there. So that path is totally different. So I was, my question was, can we integrate these two? Is there a bridge between these two? Or these two are different paths. So a, pa a guy who is following this path of acceptance, he follows this path. And a guy who is following uh, the path of visualization, he already imagines that he has it rather than feeling of lack. So do we have a bridge here or, or these two paths are different? We need to uh, take it separately. There is a comment which is there in the chat. Webber, see if that re uh, resonates with you. One sec. <clears throat> Okay, okay. So yeah, so this is what uh, 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 it is saying that accept what is uh, and uh, then visualize. Yeah, so this is what uh, uh, we can do. But I think in the path of visualization, they don't recommend this way. Na? Because the moment you accept your subconscious mind, so maybe I have a doubt here that 
maybe when if you accept it in your it goes into your subconscious mind it will never come because in the path of visualization and these uh, subconscious mind they uh, they encourage you know to be careful of what you're putting in your subconscious mind so you can never put a thought which is uh, which you do not want so when you accept it you are putting a thought that you don't have it yeah so maybe this is where if the, you explain this by way of an example web uh, it will become clear to you and everybody okay. else uh, okay. otherwise this will become a theoretical discussion okay so okay. is there so, a challenge that you are facing which you would like to discuss uh challenge say it could be money mm -hmm. okay okay so suppose you mm -hmm. don't have money right now mm -hmm. so one path is you accept money that i do not have it and of course work towards it there is a goal you have it you work it. it's a very simple path mm -hmm. and very practical path mm -hmm. okay now there is another path of visualization which says that don't uh, say that you don't have it already say you have it other this is the path they say in subconscious mind and visualization that you start visualizing you have it so now there is a conflict on the both path so uh, my question is that if a person is following acceptance path he should follow only acceptance path or if a person is following a, uh, a path of visualization and subconscious mind he follows that path rather putting the thought in his subconscious mind that i don't have or so is there a bridge in this case uh, webav uh like there is lack of money a person has and then you accept it you know and yeah. as i mentioned earlier once you accept the thought changes to being peaceful thought changes to taking responsibility what we can do about it and when you start taking responsibility uh, for what you want then the process of visualization comes at what is it that i want to do what is my goal and what are the actions i can take towards the goal and i start working towards that and Uh, when you're working towards your goals, visualization is a part of that process of achieving your goals. So, so just just a question for me. I mean, maybe more yes. to just add to yours what you're saying, Ashish. Maybe, but won't the acceptance part being that I accept that I have enough, uh, or what I have is sufficient, and and your want of more money is is a different uh, aspect altogether, right? So I feel like in this example. the acceptance should be that you have sufficient to survive and what you want to visualize is a uh, like a higher level of luxury and that's uh to to i guess the comment that that was put in yeah. first is visualizing yeah. more yeah, abundance sure. sure sorry i uh, may i know your name please shamin shamin yeah okay shamin so there is a very interesting book called happy money by ken honda and in this sorry, what, book, what was the name uh, sorry what was the name happy money happy money by ken honda you know and in this book he has interviewed 12000 millionaires uh, and uh, you know he talks about his story uh, where he goes on to during the process of his research he interviewed one person who is who had just become a millionaire and he thought that this person would be very happy because he has become a millionaire and he when he meets this person uh this person says oh i just got a million you know wh what's the big deal in this look at my friend uh, he has got 10 million dollars you know so he is much better than i am and uh, then over a period of time can uh, meets the second person who has got this 10 million dollars and can during the process of his interview was thinking that you know this person must be uh, really very happy because he has got 10 million dollars and uh, you know when he meets him and says are you feeling happy are you secure are you feeling good he says no what i have got only 10 million dollars you know look at my friend who has got 30 million dollars and he's got uh, a jet he's got a jet so can things you know even 10 million dollars is not good enough you know so over a period of time he meets the person who's got 30 million dollars he says this guy must definitely be happy and when he meets this guy who's got 30 million dollars uh you know he says no i have got such a small jet you know only it's a two seater jet only you know what's the point of having this small plane you know uh, uh, there is more that i could have so the point is the the lack uh, can be there uh, irrespective of the amount of money that we have so that is where as long as we are feeling lack you know whether you have a million 10 million or 30 million you are always operating out of that mindset that i have got less money and with that mindset 
you know, as we discussed earlier, it's a low energy uh, mindset and we will perpetually be operating out of a low energy state. But when we recognize that we have got enough with what we have and there is no stopping you, uh, there is people think that accepting what is makes us complacent, but no, it doesn't stop you. You could have a million and want $10 million, which is perfectly fine, or have 10 million, what 30 million, that is also fine. Work towards that, but work from a sense of having accomplished enough uh, and having uh, from a state of being fulfilled and peace, uh, being at peace with what you have rather than constantly feeling that I'm missing something. And as we have seen in this example, irrespect, you could be missing something irrespective of what you have got. Yeah, that's exactly the, the point I was trying to make, right? Is that yeah. you could have 100 rupees today and it be, I mean, it is sufficient for you to survive, but you may want a billion dollars, right? But the point is the acceptance part is that whatever I have today is sufficient for me to be living and whatever I need for my expenses. The want is a different story altogether. And that is yeah. probably what... Um, I guess you have to, from from what uh, Vaiba was saying, was you, what you want to manifest or visualize, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. the first step is accepting that I've been given whatever I need at the minimum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so so I think uh, uh, I I got my answer. So so uh, in, instead, first we should uh, practice. The process could be the bridge could be the first gratitude. We all know it. So yeah. I think the moment you do gratitude, as you said, uh, that you know we we already come at the uh, high energy level. And then uh, uh, we don't feel lack also. And uh, then you uh, go to the next step of visualization. So I think I got my answer. Thanks thanks a lot, Ashiji, and everyone to contributing to this yeah. process. Uh, because I was, uh, process-wise, I was missing this link. And uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing that up, Weber, because I yeah. think that resonated with many people. Uh, yeah, I should have a point on acceptance if I can yes. be yes, I can share it. See, Isha in Isha Engineering, Isha Inner Engineering, Sadhguru program, there are three profound statements which we meditate on. See, number one, he says, all rules are my rules. Once you take that particular concept, you will not be conflict with the world. Number two, he says acceptance. So like responsibility, the other one is ex responsibility. I take the responsibility, means I, there is a chance of acting. Now that one more point is this moment is inevitable. Look at that. It's a, it's a profound statement. It has transformed my life. See, what we do, why we get angry? Because we don't like what it is there now. That's why we are unhappy. Now, the question is, you cannot change that, but you can plan it. Similarly, I used to get very disappointed with my son when he was young. He used to scatter the books here and there. So I used to tell him hundreds of times, but when I come there, I find everything is scattered. I used to get very angry and occasions are there, I thrashed him also. Once I, once I attended this program, what I realized, yeah, I just came home, I opened the door, it's a messy now. Now, can something be done? Nothing I can do. It is the situation. Now, next moment, I can set it right. I can call him and make it all right. Okay, disciplining is another thing. That's different. See, once we, as, a, as adults, once we understand this moment is inevitable, that will bring a lot of uh, sanity and acceptance in our minds. Okay, it cannot be any other way. Next moment, it could be million million ways it could be changed. This understanding has helped me. That's what I thought I'd share. Thank you. Thank you so much for us. And, you know, th this this opens up, uh, being accepting opens up to the wisdom that is there. You know, it opens up to the possibilities, immense possibilities that are there. And that's the beauty of it. R when we are resisting, you know, we get trapped into a very limited way of thinking. But when we become accepting, it opens up uh, infinite possibilities for us. So that's the beauty of being accepting. Uh, Pallavi, I saw you raised your hand. Is there something you would like to discuss? <clears throat> yeah, I had a thought to share that I feel uh, uh, acceptance. Uh, sorry, excuse me. The practice of acceptance also depends on situation to situation. And what uh, Vaibha was talking about, uh, you know, following it with visualization. Uh, I feel it's not like an equation that has to be the steps of an equation it has which has to be followed. Uh, uh, like for example with people or with relationships maybe you have to accept the way they are and uh, you know but you can't visualize necessarily the outcome all the time also you may after accepting you may do uh, you may take a positive step towards it but it may it may still not give you the desi desired results so again you have to step back to acceptance that yes this is a situation for example 
when he gave the uh, the example of not having adequate wealth uh, first you accept it and then you are visualizing and you are moving towards it like maybe you you apply for changing of jobs or you look at alternative avenues of creating wealth but that may still not give you the desired result so you have to accept at the end of it that yes maybe this is to, you know to be and then look at it in different way, ways again to move ahead so it's a step where you are moving forward backward forward backward at every point and you have to realize and probably i think that's what the path is about to develop a wisdom as to when you should apply acceptance and then you apply uh, you know uh, uh, apply an action or visualization or whatever you may want to do my other uh, question was um, how does one know that you're not being complacent when you are accepting it you know yeah yeah that's that's very beautiful uh, pallavi i think both your question and your sharing are very nice and coming to relationships and acceptance i think one thing uh, that's uh, been a big learning and change in me is dropping judgments you know when it comes to relationships when you start accepting people as they are that becomes possible when you start dropping judgments about it you know and who says what is right what is wrong you know who, who gives us the authority to be the judge that the other person is right or wrong from the other person's perspective he or she is right and from your perspective these are only perspectives uh, so uh, you know the, uh, that changed a lot of things for me and that helped me in transforming my relationships with people around me when i started dropping judgments about people and that that really makes uh, uh, the relationships very safe you know the other people start uh, realizing that you're not judging them so they start opening up to you and you know in that situation uh, you know we always want people we most of the times want people to align to our thinking you know our way of thinking and that is a better chance when we start accepting people as they are and then you know we start finding that we have more lever with them to influence their thinking and bring them around to our way of thinking so uh, that is one thing uh, pallavi i wanted to share on that and you could and like pallavi said you know there is no one straight line we are looking for straight line answers always but it's more like ebb and flow ebb and flow and uh, you know so some you try keep trying and keep trying till we find our personal truth and once we find our personal truth we start living that uh, sorry pallavi i missed your question what was your question i said uh, how does one know when you are accepting that yeah, you are yeah, complacent yeah. yes so the the way i would respond to that is uh, if we are living our life by our goals you know deciding what we want then we accept that what this is what where i am but this is where i need to go and then i am working towards that direction so i'm not stopping i'm not giving up i'm not letting go i am doing what i need to do except fully accepting what is the current situation uh i don't know if that helps pallavi but uh, that is what comes to me uh okay i'm mean, good enough thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you pallavi so friends we will now start with our uh, mindfulness meditation uh, please settle down you could do this sitting or lying down in case you are sitting please keep your back and neck in a straight line uh, straight but not stiff and bring your attention to the area at the entrance of your nostrils and observe every breath that is coming in and moving out as it is this mindfulness practice is not about regulating our breath but observing it as it is see your environment through the lens of acceptance look at what is there without judgment or the need for change truly see 
and exhale. Look at the sights, hear the sounds, just as they are. Now, if you feel like, close your eyes gently or soften your gaze. and settle down in the position that you have chosen for yourself. Continue to breathe. Breathe in. Breathe out. We can add unnecessary suffering to our experience. When we want our reality to be something other than what it is, when we can release our resistance and accept what is, we experience peace. Letting go of resistance and accepting ourselves and the present moment experience is an ongoing practice. And this guided meditation for acceptance can be part of that process. You might think of it as training for our day-to-day -day life experiences. Although we don't have control of the external weather, we can always control our own internal weather to experience the peace. Breathe in, breathe out. Notice the sounds in your environment just as they are. Hear the sounds as they come to you without searching them out. Allow the subtle noises to drift into your awareness. With simple curiosity, take interest in these sounds as they are. Whatever arises during this meditation is of a teacher for being present with acceptance. Breathe in. Breathe out. Become aware of your breath just as it is.
observe every breath coming in every breath going out natural breath normal breath as it is just accept it as it is do nothing as you continue to breathe become aware of your inner physical experience just as it is notice how you are showing up to this practice not needing to be something else or to be somewhere different then exactly where you are take note of exactly where you are on your journey with acceptance give yourself permission to simply be say to yourself silently i accept myself as i am i love and approve of myself exactly as i am repeat one more time I love and approve of myself exactly as I am. Breathe in, breathe out. Peace is available to us. when we stop resisting what is in any given moment settle into your body notice the sensations just as they are if you notice any discomfort pain or stiffness don't judge it simply notice it and accept the sensations as they are notice any sensations of pleasure in the body simply observe them accept the sensations without generating any attachment to them
your body is a perfect manifestation of your internal thoughts. Accept your body as it is. Accepting allows you to fully experience what is happening in the present. To fully engage in life. Breathe in, breathe out. There is no need to make a change during meditation. Just be as you are. Without going into story, or naming specific events. Let go of blame of yourself and others. Let the heavy feeling float off your shoulders. Let go of blame of your circumstances. Let the sensation dissolve from your muscles. Let go of any judgment of good or bad. When you sit and pause, you can choose to befriend your circumstances with compassion. Know that without suffering, we cannot know joy. Without darkness, we cannot know light. Allowing life as it is can lessen any struggle and perhaps additional unnecessary suffering. Breathe in, breathe out. As you continue to breathe, notice your emotions. Experience the physical feelings of your emotions. Where in your body Are you experiencing them? Experience your emotions just as they are. Let go of the idea of what your emotions should be. There is no should be in the meditation experience. Breathe in. 
when you feel life brings you challenges you have the opportunity to be transformed by acceptance you may add suffering when you resist the way things are because they are in the way you expect or want them to be breathe in breathe out there is a possibility for change only after the reality has been accepted and believed to be true peace is available when you stop resisting any given moment shortly we will come to the end of this practice continue to be aware of your natural breath stay with the present moment and accept whatever is continue to breathe as we come to the end of this practice consider setting an intention that the practice of accepting mindfully will benefit you and everyone you come in contact with today thank you for practicing mindfulness with me you may choose to stay with the feeling for a couple of seconds more and open your eyes once you are comfortable and share with us your experience of this mindfulness practice and anything else that may have resonated with you today
anyone would like to share? We're open to any questions, comments, or sharing. Yeah, so shall I share? Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think uh, in your all PPTs, it's written beautifully that uh, on the whole experience of learning is. Uh, yeah. So in your uh, uh, all presentations, you know, you say that 10% is learning, 20% is interaction and 70% is action. Yeah. But I think all the three happens here. We get content also, we get interaction also 20%, 30%. And then 70% is that we do this mindfulness practice of 70% of taking action. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole 100% happens in this uh, forum, uh, in this Sunday uh, thing. So this is what I think the whole complete cycle happens here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Now we are here for another minute or two to take any questions, comments, or sharing. Else we'll draw the session to a close. Uh, Ashish ji, where can we learn more uh, about this mindfulness practice? I can, uh, uh, I'll share the link uh, to mindfulnessexercises.com that's a very good website it's got over 500 pages it's there is well the tons of uh, wealth which is there on mindfulness uh, i'll share in our groups otherwise mindfulnessexercises.com you can look up sean fargo mindfulnessexercises.com yeah. thank you thank you anupji thank you for loving for that question <laughs> thank you friends for joining us for this session Sunday morning. Our next session will be at 9 a.m. next Sunday. Uh, coming Saturday, that is 28th, we will have no session. Our next session will be on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you for joining. You thank can you, add yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Jogeshi. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Weber. Thank you, Manavar. <laughs>